And welcome to PM Express. When you have the final say on the public purse at a time of economic crisis, your role become even more pronounced, even more important uh, than in ordinary times. That is a significance that the role of a member of parliament has become at a time when this country is in its worst economic crisis for a long, long time. And it's even more pronounced if you are in leadership in Parliament. And that is why this evening, we're speaking to a man who came into Parliament as an ordinary member of the House. And now, in the last two years, has become the Deputy Majority Leader at the most tumultuous times in parliamentary history in, in the Fourth Republic. At a time when you have a hang Parliament, but also, more importantly, you have an economic crisis. So how is it like? being a, a leader, a, a deputy majority leader at this time of economic crisis when you have to approve, for example, $750 million in fresh loans. Or else, as the IMF told the members of the Finance Committee recently, this economy will possibly sink. That loan has been approved, but Parliament that just went on recess was without um, ended with a lot more controversy. This is a parliament that still has one of its members on the opposition side, currently barred from going to the House to do parliamentary business. And there's another one on the incumbent party side that risks vacating her seat. Really unprecedented times in parliament. And we'll be speaking to Alexander Fenyomarke. Some very interesting questions you have to field uh, of the life of this meeting of parliament here on PM Express. When we return from the break, Alexander Fanyo Marking is my guest. And thanks for staying with me. My guest is Alexander Fanyo Marking. He is the deputy majority leader. And as I introed, um, he's really coming at a time when parliament is going through really unprecedented, I don't want to call it a challenge or opportunities, because if you look at it, first of all, this is the first time we have a hung parliament. So already, the job of any leader in parliament is, is very, very difficult. I mean, I doubt if in the history of the Fourth Republic, it's been any difficult time like this for any, any leader in the House. And then, unfortunately for him, two years or so into his leadership as a deputy, then comes a major, major uh, economic crisis. And as you know, parliament is the final, final, you have the final say when it comes to releasing of, the, of monies from the public purse. They, they are the approving authority. On the matter and so everything goes through the leadership of the house and two mps i mean it's it's on against this background that i speak to him especially when parliament just went on recess the a few things they did one of the key things you remember obviously is a mid-year budget review and another big big event considering that we've been to the imf mr fanyo mark i'm grateful for your time here on pm express thanks to have you again it's a pleasure it's a privilege to be on this uh, program once again are you well rested? I mean, you just left for recess last week, uh, Friday was? Well, I don't think I've had a rest. Um, it's been going back and forth, uh, constituency work and uh, meeting constituents. We are in very challenging times. If you allow any vacuum, the frustrations will manifest in, in, in the elections mm -hmm. and you get booted out. Uh, I have always relied on research, and I don't doubt data. I'm not one of those people who will be fighting data. Uh, when civil society organizations go and do their work, I take it as a bitter pill, a mm -hmm. chloroquine that would heal my malaria. So we've been working on some research findings, and I have a fair idea how Ghanaians feel about this government. How do they feel? What's the research telling you? Well... We have a lot of frustrations out there, okay. and, and we can't run away from that fast fact. The opposition would have a windfall if we lay back. We have to work. We have to explain. The little we can do, we must demonstrate to the people that we mean well. Look, COVID struck. Almost two years, the economy was at a standstill. Soon thereafter, we had Russia-Ukraine war. When initially it started, and we're talking about it, people downplayed it. 
But today, the cement factories are in need of cement, the, 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 the paper, to bag. Most of these are coming from Russia. Iron rods are coming from Ukraine. Wheat coming from Ukraine. The value chain is affected. The world economy is in crisis, and Ghana is not insulated in any way. The ordinary Ghanaian trader who goes to the market and his business or her business is affected must blame somebody. The person to blame is government. Is that what you're picking up from? No, no, research? that is the reality, yes. The research too is reflecting Of course, this. of course. Because when people are frustrated, who is there to blame? Government. It's not the opposition. So for those of us in that privileged status, that is the time for us to work extra hard. And to me, it hasn't been a rest. <laughs> Three days ago, I was in Winneba up to 2 a.m. We're meeting constituents in the villages, engaging them, explaining, talking to them, having 4 a.m. meetings, having 5 a.m. meetings. I'm curious, break it down for me. So when you go there, what are some of the stories you hear? I know you've done the research, but then that then trickles down into personal encounters. Right. What, 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 what are they telling so, you? Are they upset with you or are they upset with you are the representation no, they, of the government? What, what, is, what is the experience? No, like? well, for I can speak for a foot too. They are not upset with me as an individual, but they are upset with the situations they find themselves. Did they take it on, up on you? Did they like lash well, out at you? Well, if you because... don't engage them, obviously they will feel that you don't care. But through the engagement, what I realized was that, oh, okay, oh, yata say, oh, dama, oh, okay, yata say, so, kakrebi obaban, yajitum. So then you tell them that, look, we'll government, the little that comes government made these interventions, one, free SHS, you would have paid more. Electricity, government reduced tariffs. When we were in opposition, we said it. The then government said it was an impossibility. But we came in and we reduced the taxes, uh, the tariffs. Today, because of the nature of the world economy, people are suffering because jobs are not coming in. A lot of our graduates have their certificate and they are home. So that frustration is there. You have many of the nursing trainees who have been engaged because we don't have backlog anymore, unlike before. But still, because the economy is not growing, the private sector is not growing the way it's supposed to grow, many more of our youth are depending on the public sector. So that is where the frustration is. So our responsibility as MPs in government, ministers, government appointees, MMDCs, chief executives, will be to leave the office after five, spend the weekend with the people, Explain. Because look, if you don't explain, if you don't communicate, trust me, the people may vote against you. And in this enterprise, we have two major political parties, MPP and DC. You may be voted against, not because NDC is better, but because they feel frustrated. And in reality, I've been asking, the NDC in the last eight years when they were in the office, came into opposition, has anything changed? The same old appointees with their appointor, who they want to bring back as their flag bearer. What has changed? Even in 2020 campaign, did they demonstrate that having been in opposition, they are coming with something new? What were some of the policies that even in opposition now, they have come out with that would resonate? It's all about, okay, Let's attack, attack, attack. So we have a duty to let the ordinary Ghanaian know the apolitical group, the political activists know that we are better. But how do we demonstrate that? Through communication, through demonstrate, through tolerance. Because sometimes we often rubbish the views of the apolitical, the CSOs, and we think that, oh, they are criticizing you so... They are wrong. Many no. in your government have been accused of that, that at a time when the honorary Ghanaian is suffering, you've just um, articulated that you've experienced it, 
the body language, the posture, the public utterances hasn't been conciliatory, hasn't been to make the point, I identify with your pain, I identify where you're coming from. It's been, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not our fault, it's the NDC's fault. That language is what is going to kill the MPP in government. No, I, I do not think the, the language now is, it is the NDC's fault. The vice president. No, no, no. Addressed a gathering recently you know, on the IMF matter, and he said that there are four reasons. Two of no. them NDC, two of them foreign. Never took, for once, owned the problem and said, this is a problem that we have supervised over the last five years. Evans, Never once did that. Evans let's put it in context. If somebody says that, a government that we inherit, I mean, we took power from, created certain problems. And that problems affected our finances. That person would have justification. An example is the banking sector crisis. All right? In 2016, President Mahama, in addressing parliament, conceded that poor supervision by Bank of Ghana resulted in many Ghanaians losing their investment. The question is, what did this government do to, to resolve this? They left it. We came in. The problem had gotten to a tipping point. The over 22 billion that had to be invested to pay people their deposits and to create a new opportunity for the banking sector. Those monies could have been injected in some other areas. So if somebody says, that, look, we came to meet this big hole, the person will be justified. Yeah, two, but, two. Evans, but you know, that's why the Evans, people I'll, 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 I'll come elected to you. Yes, I, I'll make the point. So the people elected us to fix the problem. Yes. And we are saying that in fixing this problem, it has cost us so much. It depends on perhaps how we put it. All right? Second, look at steady the, the pay or uh, 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 take, you know, policy there. The, the, the You're IPP, talking about excess capacity, the, uh, take or pay uh, policy. That, those contracts that were... Yeah. How do That's we... mentions uh, that too. How, how, do we, how do we, as a government... This is a contract, a valid contract that has been negotiated. Do you resolve, repudiate? It comes at a cost. Yeah. I am saying that if these were well thought true, all right, wouldn't come and get our hands tied mm. into a situation. But you've so been that in is power, one. But you've been in I, power for that notwithstanding. six years. So that notwithstanding. The question I... You, let's start from where you started. If, Evans, we may divert. Let, let, let's land on yeah, this. No, but, but no, no, no I want to land on with respect. The people that you are serving, Evans, do they care? Evans, wait. So I am saying that if I explain as a father yeah. or as a mother that what I have come to meet, this is the situation, that notwithstanding, I am taking steps to solve the problems by introducing certain social intervention programs to sustain the economy. Two critical interventions, electricity tariffs and free SHS. So this is we what were been, paying more. This is what no, you've been telling your no, constituents. I, I want to move on to We were paying to more. Things. Evans, mm -hmm. the reality is that before 2017, we were paying more. The ordinary Ghanaian was paying more on electricity tariffs. Corporates were paying more. Check at PURC. The government intervention there reduced tariffs between 18 to 30 percent, depending on their category of consumption. And then you impose other taxes. You impose e-levy. You've imposed well, sanitation tax. Right. Within you've, the same period. Their, within the, the, within the same period. You one hand and, and no, that, 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 would, that would not be accurate. But that's true. Even Those are factual the first major. That you the, also okay. So the first major fiscal policy decision by this government was on the introduction of the e-levy. However, before the e-levy, don't forget that we came to meet a lot of taxes that we had to abolish, repeal, and some we had to reduce. Let's look at the numbers. In fact, this government has provided more social services than it has imposed taxation on the people of Ghana. No, but as we speak no. currently, I mean, I, 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 hear, I hear government officials make this point all the time, but let's trick back to the ordinary man in your constituency. You believe seriously at a time when the man is hangry, they care about an explanation? Of course, that I agree with you that- He just wants food on the table. Exactly, so that is where- They don't care about so, 
you know, excess that, that, capacity. Uh, of course. Banking of course. sector. Exactly. Clear. Because you've had sex. So that, rightly so. I agree. So that is where our common stra the communication strategy must be aimed at ensuring empathy. Is your com stra failing? And I don't think it is. If for nothing at all, there is that realization that we need to be more proactive. And I think so far, MPs, government appointees are moving in that direction, agreeing that we need to communicate, especially the success stories. Look at the, the NVTIs. In my constituency, the Germans set up the NVTI institution in 1980. Not a single classroom block all these years under Rollins PNDC and the Kufo and the Atamils and the John Mahama. It's, a, it's under Akufuado that over 57 vocational training institutes have seen facelifts. And there's a standard. In Winneba, if you come, they have a new BNC, building and construction mm. workshop with modern equipment. They have administration block, classroom block, they have their hostels, okay, well equipped. And this is not only in Efutu, across all the NVTIs. Evans, Joy FM is always doing fact check. Go and check it. This, for instance, is training our technicians, those artisans at that level who are not making it to free SHS mm. mainstream. Hold on, let me finish. I hear you. I mean, and I'm saying that the benefit there too are enormous. So your point is that and I'm saying that officials must communicate. We must. I, I, and very, there's an urgent need to do so. Okay. Very finally, on, on the research you started with, I get a sense that it's pointing to a defeat for the MPP. I don't think so. If, if the things you just mentioned, the urgency, the explanations, the, the going to the people, identifying with them, sympathizing, empathizing, fixing your problems, and done. That's what it's pointing to. You said to use the word frustration. Is that what it's pointing at? Let's take away the defeats. And face the <laughs> but, reality. But that's what it boils I'm on. saying that our bona fide as a government yeah. is to tell our story. Yeah. Our bona fide. Are the people buying the story? Depending on our approach. And to me. The evidence on the ground says they are not buying your story. To me, so far, for instance, let me show you um, research, you know, yesterday, I mean, last week, we did some work. You know, Winneba Junction. That's where we have a lot of traders congregating, sure. all drivers and whatnot. Look, we did an opinion poll. Winneba Junction, MP, 187.4. Would you vote for Afenio Markin? What are the things that he's doing? 187 and 11 against. Then they say, President Akufado, his performance. Do you think he's doing well? 121 for 77 against. Then the assemblyman, she is not doing well because she's in a third term. 33 for 165 against. I, I, may I submit that this is very questionable statistics. Oh, no, no, no. I, oh, every. In that enclave. No, no. I am, a strong I am telling you. No, I I'm, 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 I'm telling you what yeah. is but happening. You, and then we this. also have. Yes. How much of a value I, are you placing? Because this may deceive you. You know what, Evans? I'm just questioning. How much I place a lot of value on this? Evans, there are other places oh, that we are down. No, no. Evidence. There are other places that we are down. If you come to Winneba Central Market, yeah. you realize a tight race, very close. But when it comes to the MP and the Assemblyman, the figures are different. I'm saying that I take research as a debater pill. Okay. Since my first but this, time... But this is not better. This is showing, at least the ones... No, no. So it gives you a guide because rosy. we have... It's rosy in the midst no, of the crisis. What I'm saying is, no, there are, there are other areas that we are not doing well. Okay. And then we have the audios. Okay? The audio. You see, the audio is attached. Mm. So you know the views of the people. Mm. So you can now act on it. I depend on research. Since my assemblyman days, 2006, I have my book that I engage researchers. In 2020, Imani was engaged by Honorable Kennedy, Japan, and I to do central region for us, okay? They predicted that we were going to get nine seats, absolute. The others were shaky. Only one person in Team Fodjo admitted to the findings 
and worked on them and he won. Mm. We got 10. The others rubbished it. I am saying and that. Lost. And we lost marginally. Yeah, I've, heard him, I've, heard him, I've heard him say that publicly. Yes. But, but Evans, let me finish. So what I'm saying is that, as it is today, I would want to call on all MPP activists, all MPP appointees, that the way to survive and to say that we are breaking the eight is to communicate. If we let Ghanaians know that these are the interventions, these are the difficulties. They would empathize. And then we also relate to them. There will be nothing to worry about the, because, the, because, the because, in conclusion, because mm -hmm. the rival, the opponent, has nothing superior the to offer. Because on the ground, if, if, if the if evidence today, on the ground, like when you're marking, yes. contradicts the point that the Ghanaian, if you do what you say, simply communicate and they will get you. The evidence on the ground doesn't support that. I'll give you an example. Your own boss in parliament, Chairman Sabonsu, in the constituency that the MPP has held for decades, that he has been at the helm of, went to the constituency to do something that you say is developmental, to tell them that the role is going to be done. He was hooted at, not only hooted, he was chased out. He was pelted with sachet water. Water entered into his glass, he told me on Top Story himself. They were upset with him and he told us it was clear that he, he understands that the people are upset with the government and they, they saw him as a representation of the government and so they took that anger on him that i put to you is the evidence on the ground that for a majority that in a place like swami to get that sort of treatment where he had to be wixed away in in his own vehicle by the police that should tell you that what you're saying if that's all it takes then that won't work What's your reaction to the what's your reaction to what happened in Swami? Evans. What does that tell you? Evans, I've already made a point, and at the risk of being repetitive, let me reiterate. There is general frustration. Mm -hmm. The way to handle it is to communicate. But that's not working. Two, I need to finish. In Swami, it definitely no, no, is not working. You see, people are not buying no, that no. in Swami. The fact that the fact that people pour out their sentiment, okay? Does not mean that they are fed up with you. What they that are means fed is that up with you. no. What that means is that they expect action, which you are not getting. What that means is that they expect action. Now ask yourself: in the Chairman Sabunsu situation, the contractor was already on site. Compacting had been done. What the people were saying was that look, the asphalting has delayed. Now to them, they don't like you said. They are not interested in the procedural issues in Parliament. Just give me that my road. That you brought the loan. Uh, the loan must be approved. Give it me has my to loan. go through give community. Give me my road, yes. Right. Give me my loan. I mean, give me my, my road. road. Yeah. As to the inner workings of getting it done. They don't care. They don't care. So that is why. That's what I'm putting to you. It's not a communication problem. No, no, it is. You must, you see, for instance. They don't want to hear no, no. the communication. So, that's they want I'm... to see the results. Yes. So, they want to feel it. They want to see the results. I agree. Done. I agree, Evans. If you communicate, and that communication is born out of good faith, and they see the tangibles coming in, definitely they will give you the benefit of doubt. That does not mean that if they have to pour out their frustrations, they would not. And to me, pouring out the frustrations amount to the bitter pill that will be on your lip, on your tongue, for you to know that all is not well, so go into action. It is the best thing any politician can ever get than to see silence. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so they surprise your you. Your simple on, on advice to your colleagues is communicate. Let's communicate and take action. We cannot okay. get so everything you've added done. a second line. Communicate and take action. Of course, because you have to take action. Okay. And in taking action, get it, you can't do 100%. You would have to explain again why you cannot do all. So, for instance, if you come to Winneba, we are doing the bypass road, okay? The Sankur, Insuetir, Warababa, Jahazi road has been done. If Ansafo East and West are complaining that, Honorable, why haven't you done our roads? It is for me to explain to them that, look, Sikan orun tumi yeni yinara. Inti wonya botar. Abana ya hazi. Akaha wonya botar. Street lights. When it's dark. When I was in Winbo over the weekend, 
I drove through some localities, midnight, to see for myself where there was darkness because students were complaining and all that. And I chided the assembly members that you are doing the interface. We have over 1,000 street lights. It's your duty to ensure that you go around and fix them. Work with your MC. So I chide the that's MC. A, so that's the action bit. I say, MC, engage the people all the time. The radios are there. When you are doing it, let them know. If you come to Winneba, the Klimovic Junction, we had the Intercrufum, the bridge was almost collapsing. We noticed it during the ECOWAS uh, session. We had to close it, fix it in record time, then use the bypass. Today, the bypass is being fixed. The people complain about some portals. Asphalting has been done, but not all. Those who are complaining that their areas have not had asphalting, you must explain to them and assure them that if it is not today, it will be tomorrow. Mm. For instance, the traders who are expecting the semi-graduated uh, support, somebody has gotten, somebody hasn't gotten. Your duty is to explain and demonstrate that, look, the fact that somebody has gotten means that it will get your turn. Employment, security services, you get a youth, some of them bought forms, they get opportunities, others have not gotten. An another so aspect, I am saying that again and again, another aspect it of is this. the commitment, the explanation, yeah. and the action. Another aspect and of And without doubt, without doubt, mm -hmm. if we are with the people and we continue to explain to them, Look at recently. Wait, 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 we talk, Evans, talk about, you Evans, talk about with the people. Just, Evans, just look at recently. The London, beach, on, the London Beach yeah, Project. I, I saw that. The but London that, Beach Project. You say, you say with NDC the people. NDC and previous government could not. You say with the could people. Could not. I, I want to stay on that Move in phrase. to initiate the London Beach Project. You, you this government with, has boldly you say with, initiated the you London Beach Project. You say with the people. Now, with and the, it's happening. With the people in this time. Close season. Government with, gives with support the people, to the fishermen. With the people in this time, it's also the people seeing that a government superintending of an economy in crisis is cutting its coat according to its size, first of all, but also um, limiting spending. What is the government, personal members of the administration, and the executive, and the legislature, what is the personal sacrifices that you are making to show to the people that at least you identify with their needs. At a time when criticism has come, that the president is still flying luxury, high, private jets. No, it's, it's, it's pe people perceive that as a problem. They haven't seen enough in their leaders at the time of crisis for them to believe that we are all in this mess together. Mess that largely, of course, you take full responsibility for. Obviously, what, what, where, where's the personal sacrifice? This is a difficult time to be in government. A difficult time to be in government because the world economic crisis is overwhelming all governments. I would agree with you that some more sacrifice would have to be made. Such as? Especially those of us in government. Specifically? What do you want to say? Empathy, our conduct, how we go about things, how we relate to the people. And if somebody raises a genuine concern, not the propaganda one, a genuine concern, you look at it and address it. Even your own party members could be frustrated. Somebody can say, I work for this party. What have I gotten? I was a polling agent. I was a Tescon member. I have not been employed. Why has somebody been employed? Why am I sitting at home? These would come. So, what do you do? You engage. You create the opportunity. Where the opportunity is, you make it available. Where it is not, you make sure that yeah, you You've talked about that. I'm talking about personal sacrifice. What personal sacrifices are you making yourself and your ministers and your government to well, prove I think, to the people I, I think that you are government, also government bearing announce, part of this? Government journey. announced some pay cuts. I mean, those announcements were publicly made. Okay, if you look at the media review, government is not, was, is not coming for more money. It's still operating within the ceiling that the appropriation that we granted in, 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 in January is what government is relying on. I believe that government is also focusing and 
very critical area sectors of the economy. At the same time, recently when um, organized labor raised issues of cola, government had to go the extra mile to provide the 15% cola to support, to cushion organize the, 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 our, our workforce. Don't forget that for the whole year of COVID, no Ghanaian public sector worker lost a salary. Government did not default. Government continued to pay workers. Government did not at any point say that you are not working, so I'm paying you half. Government continued to recruit. Teachers are still being recruited. Nurses are still being recruited. In our security services, just yesterday, uh, Friday, police, over 1,000 graduated recruits. In the army, 2021, government recruited. This year, yesterday I had some uh, trainees who had gone through testing and medicals are going to Sinyani for training. They were going for their letters. So I'm saying that on a daily basis, government continues to take steps to deal with the unemployment situation, but it may not reach everybody. So government has not thrown its hands in despair, say that, look, we are in a hopeless situation. Government is confident that, look, we'll cross this line, we would make it, and keeps, to, keeps assuring But you, but you said at the beginning that you believe more personal sacrifice needs to be shown by members of the government. No, 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 that, 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 that I would repeat if it's, if it's, We need to do it. If indeed the president was using private luxuries and you have to advise no, no, you him, see, would, would, you, would you ask him to at least, Mr. President, at this time, don't use the private jets? Evans, you see... Is this something that you advise? Evans, I, I don't want to go into that propaganda piece that got out of hand. You see, uh, luxury, private jet, and all that. It doesn't look good, does it? You see, it is not time, about a luxury... Like Listen, it's, it's not about a luxury private jet. But if you have somebody who would want to create a propaganda and get the effect of it, you can hear all manner of things. Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament, of which I'm a member, we had a briefing from the experts from the Air Force, the capacity of uh, the government uh, uh, aircraft for that long distance, and that it was not safe to have it travel that long distance. In fact, they reported that there was an occasion where the president in 2018 after the UN uh, General Assembly, From Washington, you know, uh, a whole lot of issues I don't want to get into there. But we are in this enterprise where people would want to do all manner of things because they need power. I believe that whatever step that the president has taken by way of foreign trips, the, such a step has been in the best interest of the people of Ghana. And the government would continue to go on that path. There could be excesses. No government can have a hundred percent, you know, situations and all. Give an that. example of but an excess. But I think, I think Give that an example of an excess. I'm saying that there could be. I think that when there such is, is there, is when there. such excesses come, have you seen our any? duty? Our duty would be to take them in good faith. Have you seen any and excess? Act upon them. Have you seen any excess? Evans, you like to push people, and that's your style. Let's proceed. It's, it's a simple question. I I'm saying it. that you can never run a 100% yeah. system. I'm just asking whether you've I'm seen I'm saying any that access. you can never run a 100% system. That's it's agreed. not possible. That's agreed. So you can have a, a machine be 100%, which is... You can never have a 100% system. And what I'm just is important you to isolate is that for me if you've seen any exit. I am saying that generally we, can, we can't have a 100% system. Let me ask you, let me take you back to your comfort zone, which is parliament. One of the biggest controversies over the last few weeks has been a question about absenteeism in the House. Um, procedural issues have become key. I mean, how do you deal with a member of parliament who has been absent beyond the constitutional limit has been an issue? 
Odukro, for example, recounts on the back of this recent controversy that 30 more MPs cited for absenting themselves from more than 50 sittings, uh, according to Odukro. Um, I know that has become an issue on the floor. The, when the, the Committee on Privileges finished his work on the three members of parliament, I know the majority position was to say, once your work is done, it should not come to the floor for debate. What's the, what's the constitutional justification for that position? Well, I think that there are some lacuna in our constitution. Um, you know, there are provisions that talk about two-thirds taking a decision. There are provisions that talk about simple majority. There are provisions that talk about committee decisions being a finality. I think that that provision that deals with a member having to vacate a seat as a result of absenteeism doesn't really extend to a situation where members of parliament would have to vote. It's only ends at a committee's findings. So some people have been asking that yes, the committee's findings would have to be tabled at the plenary. Is it only for information purpose or is it for decision? Mm. You know, so that to me is a thorny issue. But let's deal with the absenteeism. To me, MPs have a duty to attend Parliament at the plenary and at committee. And if for good reasons you're unable to attend Parliament, there's a form to fill. Take the leave of Mr. Speaker to say, for the next one week, I'm unable to attend for one reason or the other. I think sometimes we take things for granted until there's an issue. So it's a wake-up call on MPs to know that if they are absent for good reasons, they should notify Mr. Speaker. Again, you have a duty in your constituency. If you are doing constituency work, it's a reasonable cause to absent yourself from plenary or committee. You must fill the form. Ministers of State, our constitution has imposed a burden on government as executive that nominate a certain number or appoint a certain number from parliament. So if a minister of state who doubles as an MP is performing a ministerial function, he must not take it for granted that the mere fact that he's performing a ministerial function, it is assumed that he's working. He must fill that leave of absence and all that. So I think what Odikro is saying is largely right, correct? It's now for us as MPs to pay attention to these things so that we don't embarrass ourselves. I mean, in doing so, though, um, they, they, and you're a lawyer, so this will be easy for you, that they, in doing so, in, in sanctioning MPs who breach this constitutional provision, there must be a fair hearing. Um, and that constitutional provision has been quoted by the minority on the Privileges Committee to say, in the case of Sarah Jasafo, she hasn't been given that hearing because she wasn't reached at all. And because she wasn't reached or she didn't respond, there's a presumption that she hasn't been given a hearing. And so in their report, the minority decision was, well, that's the fact of the matter. Leave it to the House to decide. But the majority side had agreed already and moved ahead to make a recommendation that she should vacate her seat. Do you agree with the minority side that this matter, on her case, um, she needed to be heard and she hasn't been heard? Evans, let me be very honest with you. Quite unfortunately, I, I think I haven't seen the Privileges Committee report. Okay. I didn't really pay attention to their deliberations. And on the floor, I think I was engaged in some other parliamentary duty. So I wasn't part of the debate. I'm yet to get a hands up and follow the debate. So forgive me, I'm unable to comment on this matter. This is because it's a radio stuff. No, no, no. You've asked a specific question. Mm. And I'm saying that I have not read the Privileges Committee report. I didn't follow the deliberation. 
And I was not active in the chamber when the debate was ongoing because of some other parliamentary duty outside of the plenary. I am unable to comment on that. Okay. In the general principle, though, if somebody flouts this regulation in the, in the Constitution, um, full sanctions must apply? And well, hypothetically, and within the context of law, your, I mean, your seat. if you want us to talk in abstract or discuss hypothetical issues... But you're in favor of the, at, of the full sanctions being applied if indeed it's determined that there's no good reason, as the Constitution you know, specifies. What does the law say? If the law says A, Absent 15 and days there is, without permission. We, we combine prudence and procedure, and it yields a certain result, the law takes effect in that direction. Mm. Let me ask you. So a good friend of yours, um, Kennedy Japan, and I know you have very, in fact, this conversation, you've mentioned his name a few times, said that any government that goes to the IMF has failed. Has the MPP failed? In what context did they put it? It's clear that once you decide to turn to the IMF for a bailout or any form of support as it is, you have failed. The government has failed. In fact, recently, he was put that same question. He said, well, he said that before. He will say that now that the government has failed. My question is, do you agree with him? So, I'm asking knowing that he's a good friend of yours. But has the MPP so failed? Right now, what you want to do is that I should just oppose the views of people. No, I'm asking no, your no, view. No. That, that is his view. Yeah. It's a, there's a preamble to the no, question. No, no, but I have... I have, I have your given, own view. I have given you yeah. my view. No, but I'm asking a direct question. No, no, I'm not able to comment on Has Honorable it, Kennedy, Japan's position. Position, but, 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 but away, away from my Kennedy, So Japan. let me... Let, 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 me, me ask, the, let me ask a direct question. Right. Has the MPP failed because they've taken the decision to go to the IMF? When MPP assumed office, it inherited an IMF program. However unpalatable the program was, the MPP government navigated through and exited it. It exited with a success story. A single digit inflation, a high growth, were also able to take our nurses, trainees who were on the streets, got them employed, teachers who had completed and were staying at home three, four years, we got them into the system. We were able to roll out our major social intervention program, the free SHS, whilst we were implementing the IMF program. We exited and said we could confidently proceed without going back to them. In all of the Bruhaha, government was very optimistic. However, it got to a point that government had to face the reality. The reality being that revenues that are expected are not coming in. Two, because of our inability to pass the e-levy on time, Amidst other reasons, you have some downgrading coming in. Because of the Ukraine-Russia situation, investors are finding other places for their monies. So you are not getting the inflows as much as you expected. You are a member of the IMF. You don't only go there because you have mismanaged or that you think that there's no help for anywhere. But you also want policy credibility. You want to assure there would be investors that, look, we are working with a partner. Ghana is not the only member of IMF that is going for some support in one way or the other. So it depends on the condition. So you haven't it, failed or it, have you failed? No, it's not a matter of failure. It's not a matter of failure. If you want to look at it generally, you may have certain conclusions. Yeah, what's your conclusion? My conclusion is that there is the need to get some support, given the circumstances, like E-Levy yeah. that we introduced. Yeah. Government which, was which, optimistic. Which, which hasn't yielded exactly. the revenues that you expect. Correct. So if all were happening, 
at our port. Yeah. Because of the value chain being affected mm -hmm. by the global crisis, are we getting the inflows the way yeah, we I mean, I, I, you, you, no, partic no. you particularly right. that. But no, no, but I need to emphasize it. Yeah, I mean, so if all of it, if all of this are coming out, into play, yes. if all of it is coming, are, are coming into play, the cascading effect. Kennedy Japan was clear that when all else fail, that's when countries turn to the IMF. And it makes the I don't think you want to pitch my views no, against no. it. So, you, so uh, no, I mean, it's a fair question because he's a, he's a stalwart of the party. He has this thoughts there. And I'm, I'm asking you, do you disagree with him or you agree with him? I don't think we reconcile on this occasion. Okay. So you disagree with him on this? I haven't said so. I don't think we reconcile. But if you don't reconcile, then... I'm you, using the word reconcile. You are divergent. I'm saying we don't reconcile. I have not said I disagree with him. I say we don't reconcile on it's Kennedy Japan. Why are you? Why are you so? Why are you? I know you to be a very blunt person. Why are you using? Well, blunt in context. You uh, when you are in, you don't reconcile with him. I mean, I mean, I'm communicating. I should. I mean, I don't know the basis for his point. I am. I I sit somewhere. Fair point. Let, he sit somewhere. He has his views on the matter. I have my views on I, the I matter. I take it. I take and it. I don't want. I, I take it. I don't. I, I don't want it, you to pitch you, me I take, against him. I take it that you. But I think that we don't reconcile. Let me ask you very quickly. Very recently, the the Afrobarometer survey was out last week. And before that, week before that, there was the statistical service report. The Afrobarometer survey ranked Parliament as the third most corrupt institution. Does that reflect reality, that Parliament is indeed one of the most corrupt, in fact, the third most corrupt institutions in this country? Do you accept that as a, as a leader of the House? Just to be very specific on an earlier point that you had raised, mm -hmm. government, you know, you were talking about the sacrifices. Yes. You remember government and very briefly, because I just have a minute. Yes, 50%, you know, cuts on fuel coupons. Yes. And also the 30% uh, yes. reduction of, yes. you know, cabinet uh, salaries, salaries, you know. Yes. And uh, travel. All of those travel. Yes, yes you know, restrictions yes, that yes. were imposed. Now, back to parliament, or the perception of corruption. Mm -hmm. Evans, I am saying that the Afrobarometer findings must be taken as a beta pill so that we work on it to make things better. In the same vein, you know, our parliament is also being acclaimed as the most transparent in terms of scrutiny. According to who? Who, who, who oh, acclaimed you? Well, there are, there, are, there are reports out there. You, no, but you I'm have sure. to quote your source. No, no, no. I quote that for barometer. Well, un, 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 unfortunately... You don't have that. I don't have that. So let's take the but, corruption. But, but you, take, so you accept that no, you no, are the No, no, take that in good, good, good faith. That you know, but perhaps you want to push the fact that, oh, Alex, quote the source. But you know mm -hmm. that this 137, 137 mm -hmm. has led to serious scrutiny than we have ever seen in our democracy. We've seen much committed scrutiny, public account. Mm -hmm. You look at the plenary, at committee levels. Parliament has asserted itself. You have a speaker who is not with a so with you a really parliament is corrupt. Ruling government. So I'm saying that if there is any research findings, it's for us to study the findings. What are the shortfalls? In any event, this enterprise of politics is a perception-driven enterprise. So you don't take anything for granted. Mm. You don't rubbish it and say that, oh, it is not true. So you don't dismiss it? You don't just rubbish it, but you take it and work on it. Like I told you, Imani did me a great service mm -hmm. Which in is 2020. What you worked on. And, you, you touched on and it that, it, uh, that work done by them mm -hmm. gave me my over 60% victory. Imani saved in Team Fodjo and all those who, you know, uh, underrated their findings, did so at their peril. So as for me, Kwame Nas sitting here, I don't take research findings for granted. Okay. If there is anything about parliament, I would be happy to study, read and, read, and look at the areas of weakness. Okay. And I think parliament as an institution, headed by the speaker, 
will look at it, study it, and further engage. Alexander. To let the work of parliament look better in the, in the eyes of the Ghanaian public. Alexander Kwame Nafenyo um, Maki, you quoted your research, and the next two and a half years will show whether the research indeed bears out. Well, but for, for, for you your you information, for coming, by the way. in the future, we do research every quarter. Okay, that then Just to give you tracking. To, of course, we yeah. every quarter well, we do it. Well, for those constituents, well, they've watched, they've heard that your research. I guess, Agronifem. Oh, well, I, I agree. <laughs> Agronifem. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your evening, people.